Well, Donald Trump did it again. He turned the latest Republican debate, the third one, lucky he had turned the other two, into a bit of an empty theatre today simply by not turning up. In fact, holding a rival rally. So there were the five other surviving candidates on the stage in Florida trying to prove the Republicans why they should be the party's choice to run against President Joe Biden in a year from now. While Trump skipped it all to hold his own rally also in Florida and attack Biden in his typical Trump style that's making him the favourite at the next election. Just like the Cuban regime, the Biden regime is trying to put their political opponents in jail shutting down free speech, taking bribes and kickbacks to enrich themselves and their very spoiled children. And after today's debate between the rest of the field, Trump has probably got one less challenger to worry about. Entrepreneur Vivek Ramaswamy, he was looking for a while at the hot new thing, uh, pitching to the Republicans hard right and to conspira conspiracy theorists, you know, getting all these talking points from TikTok and all that. But today blew it by attacking the daughter of rival Nikki Haley, the former governor of South Carolina, who has been shooting up in the polls. I want to laugh at why Nikki Haley didn't answer your question, which is about looking at families in the eye. In the last debate, she made fun of me for actually joining TikTok while her own daughter was actually using the app for a long time. So you might want to take care of your family first. Leave my daughter out of your voice. Your adult daughter. The next generation of Americans are using it. And that's actually the point. You have her supporters crapping her up. That's fine. Here's the truth. You're just the easy scum. Scum. Well, that's getting it said. Joining me from Minnesota is John Heideracher, president of the Centre for the American Experiment and a writer on their most excellent Powerline blog. John Heideracher, it's great to catch up with you. Your take on the debate. Well, Andrew, it was a lively evening. Um, I, I think it's good for the Republican Party that we've got it down now to five candidates. It's a lot more manageable. We've got more serious candidates. I thought all five did pretty well in appealing to their different constituencies. I still think that the serious candidates are Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley. But I think that that very likely any of those five, with the possible exception of Vivek Ramaswamy, would beat Joe Biden. I think it's a pretty good group. Well, that's a big rap for Chris Christie, but uh, there are actually six candidates and the sixth one who wasn't there was Donald Trump. You saw him on the uh, stage, obviously trying to gazump the debate itself. Do you think any of those uh, five that were on the stage would actually take the Republican nomination from Trump? Well, Andrew, I don't think we know what's going to happen. Uh, the polls obviously show Trump way out in the lead. I'm very skeptical about that. The reality is nobody has cast a vote. They're all tied at zero. You know, nobody's got a delegate. Nobody's got a vote. The Iowa caucuses are in January. Kim Reynolds, the very popular Republican governor of Iowa, has endorsed Ron DeSantis just yesterday. I, I think people need to start start voting. And I think when people start voting in Iowa and New Hampshire, uh, the picture could look very different. Well, that's interesting. Now, you've mentioned Ron DeSantis. Uh, he was there, the Florida governor. He was a long time the front runner of the other candidates. Trump's always been ahead. But his numbers have sunk. And Nikki Haley's the former governor. She, hers have risen. And again, she seems more polished with every outing. Do you think that she is Donald Trump's real threat here? Well, we'll find out, Andrew. I think she's a threat. I think she has performed well in these debates, and I think that has helped her. I think the other thing that's helping her, I hear this from a lot of Republicans, is a lot of people think that she's the most electable of the candidates, the one most likely to win. And Republicans are desperate for victory. And I think that's one of the things that has been buoying her campaign.